Hey everyone, and those of you in my Keto Green community, I'm excited to talk with you about something that I alluded to in my newsletter that went out today. I know we all want to talk about those amazing salt and vinegar potato yeah. chips <laughs> that I have written about and I totally love, absolutely. So, uh, but we're going to go into more than that. One of the things that just definitely on my journey here to Dallas from this very long road trip and as well as quarantine. Quarantine. I know many of you guys are struggling because you have told me, but the biggest problem that we're having is incorporating movement back into our life yeah. and how vitally important it is. So I have, you know, dug into my black book, so to speak, and called on my dear friend, Deborah Atkinson. Hey, Deborah, how are you? I'm good. So good to be here. Uh, it's good to be here with you as well. So um, we'll tell our audience a little bit about you for those of the, you uh, the, for those listening who do not know about you yet, but certainly will by the end of this call fall in love with you like I have, and and what you're what you're doing. And just for those of listening who are in our Keto Green community, Deborah is in there too. She has been doing our Keto Green 16 Challenge. Yeah. She's been doing our Keto Green 16 Challenge and, and working it. And really, uh, she'll give you her feedback on that, too. And Ava Marie here is running around going into the fridge in just a second. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm the founder of Flipping 50. And, you know, everything you're doing in Keto Green 16 so resonated with me. So that's been so fun to kind of do your workout and follow the program. It's been a lifesaver. So even those of us who are in the front lines doing it, teaching it, we're still not immune to the sways and the swells of hormones. So got to ride those waves a little bit. And you really helped me kind of get over and get through a little battle with, uh, you know, too, too high cortisol doing too much of this and a little too much stress in my 2019. So I uh, was grateful for that. But I lost five pounds, 5% 5 body fat, gained two pounds of muscle and seemingly very easily. It was just like, this is simple. This is so easy. Why wouldn't anybody do this? So there's a big plug for you. I love it. That's and, awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Feeling so, so good. So my flipping 50 was born. And I'll tell you this, I was, I was raised by older parents, like much older parents than the rest of my friends, parents, and my siblings were older. And so I was doing research on older adults my whole life, but long before I appreciated it, let me tell you that. And so even as an undergrad, I was given older adults as I went through my courses and the exercise clinic work I had to do and the practicals. So by the time I got to my 40s, I thought, well, I've got this. I know I know how this works. And then and then I was in it. I was in that hot minute myself. And I had also taken on some big major stressors, life changes, you know, and I said, I want to have a bigger reach. And if I don't do this right now, I'm just going to stay here where it's very comfortable. I love what I'm doing, but I'm not going to have the reach. And I'm going to be talking about the need for it. And I have this feeling that if you can see the need and you think you can help, you have the responsibility to do it. So I jumped and and then I panicked <laughs> and said, you know, in eight months, I'm going to start paying college tuition. What was I thinking? And so I didn't let myself away from my computer for a long time. I was trying to learn how do I create an online business? I knew my business, but I didn't know how to do it in this little silver box. So I sat there for 14 and 16 hours a day, a lot that first year learning, taking courses. And I went from somebody who exercised for hours, for decades, to you know, 20 minutes and that was it. And 12 and 14 months later, you know, I'm really looking at the videos. I'm looking at myself while I'm editing and it took took that, right? Because we don't see it right here. And I realized I look leaner, stronger, you know, and I was healthier, had more energy than a lot of my friends kind of in that transitional period. And I said, what is this? Because this is not what I learned, but it's not even what I've taught at a university level. And so I dug into what happened to me and is there any science behind this and realized 
how little research is out there for women in midlife where they're the subjects because we're a nightmare, right? With hormones going like this, researchers don't really love us. And so with such a small amount of all exercise and sports medicine research, looking at females, you know, a small fraction of that, you know, probably less than 10% looking at women in perimenopause and postmenopause. I took all of that and that's the only thing we use at Flipping 50 to really help women feel like we get you, we understand you, we understand why it feels like your doctor maybe sometimes, unless they've got somebody like you or why trainers don't understand your needs. It's it's not their fault entirely. The textbooks they're using feature studies that are, you know, f- focusing on males in their peak of muscle mass, and we typically are not. <laughs> true, <laughs> right? true. The yeah. research on, you know, college college athletes, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> especially for diet programs and everything. You know, very dedicated. You tell them what to do, and they do it right. Right. And it's different in the menopause. I mean, beyond the physiology, it's also our mindset, right? And, and this is true. true, Deborah. Like we will question it a hundred ways and need it proven that it is absolutely good for us and it will work for us. Because by the time, often, by the time we get to this age, so humbly true, is that we've tried a lot of things that have not worked for us, right? Right. And so that makes it that makes it a challenge. But let me tell you, after being in the car for two days and and being in in book launch mode, six sometimes sixteen hours a day at the computer and yeah. doing interviews and 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 feeling it in my joints and in right. my back and everything and and all the gyms closed and my trainer unable to come. I had a trainer coming to the office two times a week to work with my whole team because I really believe that that is something that will increase the the mood and the atmosphere and the collaboration as well as the well-being and health of our team members. So um, I'm, you know, was missing that tremendously and, and just feeling it myself, someone who I, I am not someone, Deborah, to be honest, <laughs> That loves to go to work out. I love to curl up with a good book. Anyone, anyone listening, raise your hand, say amen, say whatever. If you are that way, you are not alone. I am totally that way, but I am always so glad when I leave the gym. (laughs) Well, you know, I think I finish my workout now at home. Exactly. One of the things we used to say is it's the best place to work ever because, you know, people always leave in a better mood than when they came in. And, you know, I used to say I had a client for um, over seven years and and actually lost her fatally, um, missed the way we separated. But I used to say we had a love-hate relationship. She hated to see me coming. She loved to see me going. I mean, that was <laughs> <laughs> But she knew she wasn't going to do it on her own. She, she also knew it was valuable and she needed to do it. And that's the secret is finding what is that thing that will help you do what it is you know you need to so that you can love it. You can love some piece of it, some part of it. Well, I think, and and I love that uh, Dr. Gabrielle Lyons says this, you have to earn your leisure time. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Especially now when we're sitting so much when we're at work and everything is so automated and computerized. It is. It is. We'll talk about more about this evolution. What is right for us in menopause? And we have a lot of people in our in our community group and our keto green community group that are that are writing in that have, have been following you. Deborah has been following your books and and you know working. Um, many people are, are are like me too. Like, hey, I'm just totally going to curl up with a good book and and that is my preference. So, but we know that that's not. That's not the right discipline and practice for the long term, although it's good for many things. I'm a full advocate <laughs> of that. But but really getting into getting into working for our bodies in the most efficient way possible. And that's why I love your work. I love your flipping 50 cafe or gym gym membership. It's really like membership. Right? Membership. I love that. The new one, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> gymbership yeah. and and doing workouts that are quick, efficient and whole body and functional because things, and this is something I noticed after I had a shoulder injury, Mm -hmm. 
hooking my bra strap. And then I remember my mom having trouble, you know, right. putting on socks. These things we take mm -hmm. for granted in our youth are really, you know, it is something that we should never lose these functions, these right. capabilities of. So, so, and, and congratulations, by the way, on your TED talk. Thank you so much. Fabulous. We've put a link in the above notes for it and we'll put some information. We'll put a link into your gymbership and this um, gift you're giving our audience too. Fantastic. Yeah. So, you know, we're on the same page, right? So it's those short workouts and twofold. Number one, it makes it easy to feel off. I can, can bite that off. I can do that. You know, 20 minutes is doable. But it's also one of the best things that you can do because it's much more beneficial to do less exercise, just do it with more purpose. And that's that's what I'd found with all those months sitting in front of my computer is that I was barely exercising for 20 minutes. But when you only have 20 minutes, you make every minute count. You're not at the gym like doing this between sets. You know, I mean, so sometimes those hour long workouts really aren't the hour long. I know I see you out there. Right. So if we make every minute count, what we're doing is optimizing our use of cortisol. Right. And I'm speaking to the choir here right now. So you could probably go on for volumes about this. But exercise requires energy. We want to use that cortisol in the proper way instead of the chronic fatigue all day, all the time, all coronavirus time that we're kind of in right now. And it's so much more amplified during midlife. But if we can retrain our body to, OK, use it and then you're done, then you've taught it to, OK, it's like a sprint and then finished and relax. And it's like purging a little bit of that adrenaline. And that's really what you're after. We, we still, many of us were socialized a long time ago to the longer you do it, if it's good a little bit, then a lot of it must be better. And we couldn't be further from the truth with that. So if it's hard and short, stop. It's good enough. And you've actually done the best thing you possibly can takes a little while to trust that because it's it's so not what we've been conditioned to believe and and i know that there's somebody out there watching that's probably saying but i love exercise i love endurance exercise and i love it so much and i do too but you know i have had to take the girl scouts out oath and say you know i'm not going to do that right now because it ends up making you more tired you know, and risking that adrenal fatigue. So you wake up in the morning, not ready to go mm -hmm. and haven't had the fun, but you feel the hangover effect. I mean, those things are telling you the exercise you're doing right now is probably not a good fit for you in the moment you're in. So true. And I want to share this, um, quote from I mean, this question from one of our Facebook users, Deborah. She says, I need this now. Here is my question. How do us older gals tighten up the stomach area? Countless sit-ups, essential oil massages, eating good, and all the skin tightening, tightening gimmicks on the market. And still, I cannot get rid of it. Even electrocuted myself with an ab belt. <laughs> Oh yeah, I did that. I don't need a six pack, just smooth. Not too much for a girl to ask, right? <laughs> Deborah, I love your honesty. Very, very good. Well, well, I'm sure there's a lot to that story. <laughs> so true. Okay. So Deborah Furt's a great name. Okay. And so I have a question. So we need to dig here. So is it loose skin or is it lack of tone in the muscle? So I can definitely help you with the tone in the muscle, but the skin is really another thing, right? So we need to kind of do from the inside out, you know, things like collagen and bone broth and tons of antioxidant rich foods so that you're getting lots of the vegetables in to help on the skin side. And I'm sure that there are some good topical lotions. One of one of our friends suggests uh, doing body lotion that's got a little retin A in it, a lower level than you'd use for your face, but for areas of your skin where you feel like it's a little bit more crepey or dry. So be sure you're taking good care of that. As far as the muscle goes, 
toning the muscle underneath is really what you're after. So you mentioned something that makes my hair stand up just a little bit, and that is tons of sit-ups. So if I could give you one tip today about toning your core, sit-ups are not a girl's best friend or your guy's best friend. So there's a saying that goes, we are we are only so far away from our back injury and we only have so many forward flexions in the life of our spine. So you won't feel it, but injuries can easily come from doing sit-ups and crunches type of activity, but there are dozens more things you can do. Planks are wonderful. Other ways of bracing your core are wonderful, and I've got a whole batch of them I'm happy to share with you. But doing them regularly is key. So you want to do things that cause you to brace, not necessarily things that cause you to do forward flexion. Because when you think about sitting up right now, if you're sitting or you're standing up, your muscles are stabilizing, bracing, and that's what they do 24-7, really unless we're exercising. That's almost one of the only times we forward flex when you think about that, right? So yes, no more sit-ups, no more crunches. Most women will do exactly what you just did. Say, oh my gosh, thank you for that because they hurt my neck anyway or they hurt my lower back, but we would keep doing them because we've always been told that's what to do. So dump them right now and Focus on a few minutes a day of a good core set. So your core does five things. It's It does forward flexion, but very rarely. Very rarely do we need it when we're not already going with gravity. We reach down to pick things up. Gravity's on our side. We really don't need help doing that. We need help standing back up. So spinal extension, lateral flexion. So we reach to the side quite significantly many times during the day rotation but stabilization is the one thing we do most of all sitting upright unless you're sitting against the back of your chair you're doing stabilization and stabilization is the kind of thing that really gets your muscles to pull back in against your spine and makes them flatter so you're looking for things to do like hold on to a weight if you were holding a weight right here so obviously i'm not but then i moved it away from my core now my core had to just kick in and I didn't have to say, tighten up. I didn't have to say, draw that navel to the spine. And that's what I was avoiding saying. So actually, I don't want you to do that. Those cues like suck your navel in or draw your navel to your spine actually weaken the muscles that you're actually trying to strengthen. So what we need to do is take a breath with me. Everybody just take a breath, put your fingers and hands on your rib cage, inhale, Really feel that, blow it up. And then I want you to exhale like you're blowing out a straw and blow all the way out, but keep your hands down here on your belly, okay? Blow all the way out. Keep blowing, keep blowing. What it should feel like is you're deflating a balloon, like your belly and your diaphragm are starting to constrict. What's happening is you're always also feeling your core a little bit. So anytime you're doing any exercise, when you're doing your strength training exercises, Focus on breathing to engage that core. Sometimes that's a cue given by trainers or instructors. They'll say, engage your core. And I've had women before say to me, my trainer says that all the time and I have no idea what they mean, <laughs> right? So go ahead and ask questions like that. It's important that you understand that, but that's really the feeling. So keep when you blow out an exhale, when you're exerting, if you pick up a box, blow out an exhale, because then you're using your core in front and not straining your back. Little things like that will gradually help you a little bit more. So yes, you can. And here's what I would suggest. One thing that's really a dream. If you can, try yoga. Do yoga poses where you're in plank position, you're doing lateral poses, and you will find that a lot of them require a tight core in the way that's bracing and flattening that core. So you're doing a lot of multitasking and working your core at the same time as working other muscles and working on your balance and decreasing your cortisol. Yeah, no, I love that because that makes such a big difference in understanding engaging your core. So that feeling yeah. of engaging our core is that complete exhale. Yeah, right? Yep. 
That is so good. That is so good. Tell us, uh, you know, a little bit about what drove you to do your TEDx talk and your and and what that was. I know you lead, lead into a couple really key points that women, especially those of us over 50, and I'll be 54 this month, <laughs> really, yes, really, um, really need to recognize as it comes to working out. And I will say this and working with thousands of women is that sometimes it, you know, the undertraining is as is harmful as the overtraining. Right. Yep. We're looking for the Goldilocks. The exactly. Goldilocks. Okay. <laughs> not too much and not too little. And for you, you know, Dr. Anna, and for me and for anybody right now watching, our Goldilocks is different, mm -hmm. right? And it's different potentially right now, today, than it will be two months from now. So we keep having to listen, use that feedback back. And that's probably one of the best lessons regarding fitness and what you're doing is listen. What is your body telling you? Because all of those little messages that tell you, you know, I'm not sleeping or I've got this huge appetite when I exercise probably are suggesting you're potentially doing a little bit too much because if you're in that sweet spot, your appetite is better, your blood sugar is more stable and you've got even energy and you get healthfully hungry. I think you're ready for a meal, but you also are ready to stop and you understand what that feels like to be full and satisfied. So looking for, you know, that sweet spot, that's what I talked about. And I think the two stories that I really illustrated in my TED talk were that the tendency for women was to over exercise. So when there's something we decide, I want to change this, you know, it's, it's those moments when ah, that wasn't there yesterday, <laughs> like what, you know, or I just feeling like I'm seven months pregnant. How can that be? And I'm in menopause, you know, and not feeling comfortable in your own body. And we want to do something. And when we decide, we decide now we're doing it. And overdoing it is probably, I see more often than underdoing it. Um, and so I illustrated that restore before more is one of the biggest tenets of flipping 50. So it's the number one. So you can go on and look at the others once you've done that. But it's like writing checks on an account where there's no money. We all know how that turns out, right? Or I do, unfortunately. <laughs> I've done that once or twice. And, you know, when we serve others all the time, we give, 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 give. We put in a full day's work. We're then coming home to do our other work and and feeling like I've got to exercise. I've got to exercise to get that weight off. Sometimes we've got limiting beliefs there and forget 50 and 100 years ago. My mom is 94 and I asked her as I was home for Christmas, I said, do you ever regret you know, not exercising when you were younger, not exercising more. She said, no. I said, you know, I'm going to have to edit that, right? I mean, that was the wrong answer. But um, she said, chores were our exercise. She said, heavens, we didn't need to exercise. We lived on a farm and we had to do everything. And, and that's true. And we don't have that anymore. When we go to work, we open up the silver box, right? And, and work is at the computer so much of our time. So unless you do have a job that you're on your feet, you also have to consider that. So two of the individuals that I was working with were actually in the healthcare field. They were nurses or healthcare educators and on their feet constantly back and forth in the hospital and doing 12 hour shifts and and then exercising two or four hours in addition to that during the day. And they were exhausted. And so we had to stop and say, look we've got to fill this hole up that you've dug yourself into. We've got to feel good before we can feel great. So restoring before more so that you've got the energy to actually do the exercise and you're looking forward to it, not dreading it. So check in with what are your feelings right now about what it is you're going to do. Yeah, no, I like that restore before more. So I put that in the notes. I just think that that makes a really big difference in looking at 
what our daily activity is and the concept and this, you bring this into your workouts, the functional exercises, Mm -hmm. how that's important for us, especially as we age Mm -hmm. and incorporating functional exercises. So describe that a little bit and why that is so important along with our high intensity interval training. Good. And, you know, with the functional exercise, we could cross over and that can be a part of the interval training as well. So it's the movements that we choose. And, you know, if you think about from the first point, we get up in the morning and one of the very first things we do involves you forward flexing, rotating, and then extending within seconds when we get out of bed. And we do it again all day. As we sit down, we rotate into our desks and our desktop and when we get in and out of cars and we take it for granted unless unless you've had a back injury you don't take it for granted when you're there and you remember what that was like but we need to practice those three planes of movement so we we are very linear we move forward and and sometimes we move backward but mostly we move forward well we need to get back to that lateral movement and some of us haven't done that since we did drills in basketball, right, in school. And we need to rotate as we're doing things because we do it from the moment we get out of bed until we go to sleep at night. And those are the places where we often will get hurt. So you could be exercising and saying, I exercise, but there are a lot of people who work with trainers regularly who also get hurt shoveling snow because what they've done shoveling snow has been nothing like what they've done in their very linear workout. So it's important that you choose the movements you're doing carefully. So one of the big things that we do at Flipping 50 is we do strength training exercises. And that is a big part, kind of the number one, it's a girl's best friend when we're talking exercise, weight training and high intensity interval training are your two first go-tos. When you fill in that calendar for what am I doing this week, those things should be on it because those are the things that will help you keep your metabolism up. They will help you hold on to fast twitch muscle fiber. And that again, lends to metabolism, but it also helps us to have those reaction skills. Reaction skills we need no matter who you are to take our foot from the accelerator to the brake at the right time, to catch a falling glass or a child from or ourselves, right? We catch our toe on the rug or on a step and we misjudge it. And that can happen at 50 as easily as it can happen at 90. So. It will happen to you sooner if we lose those fast twitch fibers and we lose them about twice as fast as we do slow. So when you think about it, that makes a lot of sense. We move slowly. We're always moving. Even if you don't necessarily go out, take lots of long walks. We you kind of go about our business, but we don't necessarily sprint to do it. We don't necessarily do quick movements with our feet and we need to. So it doesn't take a lot of time, but it takes a couple of minutes of time and you can you can do what I call a finisher. So if you've gone for a little walk, then spend a little time stepping over the cracks and the sidewalk when you get back. Do a little foxtrot, take ballroom dance with your honey. All of those things that teach you new patterns and make your feet move in different directions are wonderful for not just right now, but for 10 and 20 years from now. Yeah, that's so true for cognition. That's neuroplasticity, right? Can increase our brain firing and and really help us make new neural patterns. And I love I love the research when I was reading that about the ballroom dancing and just dancing in general, that that increases that neuroplasticity. So yes, definitely, definitely do this. Now, Deborah, Will you design for our listeners, you know, discuss like really key components of an exercise prescription based Mm -hmm. on your decades of research and wisdom Mm -hmm. for those of us in this menopausal transition? Because we do, we want that hourglass shape back. Maybe we can touch on that too, because as hormones are shifting, we often get more of this straight male shape and we want that hourglass. So incorporating you know, those exercises that also help us flatten our belly, but keep our hourglass shape. Yeah. Okay. So 
Yeah, that's it. Okay, we're done now. <laughs> that's it. Okay. So a couple of things, and let me give you the basics, and then we may want to come back to this. So thinking about your body type, your specific body type as well. So whether you have always been a little bit more muscular, you respond really well and quickly to exercise. So being a mesomorph, having a little bit more muscle, you know who you are. You potentially are the ones who say, why, well, whenever I lift, I get a little, I get bulky or I see results right away. And you're not going to get bulky. We're just going to give you the formula for that. Okay. <laughs> that is not bulk. That is good. All right. <laughs> and there are some of you who are very linear where it's hard to keep that muscle on and probably fewer of you. We don't hear from you as often, but as we get older, we want to make sure right now you're building some muscle and some muscle to help you also build your bone and hold on to it and not not increase those losses as you age. But we don't want to be frail. None of us. I think if we looked ahead 20 and 30 and 40, and I don't know about you, but I'm going all the way. You know, we don't want to be losing that bone or the muscle, either one. Yeah. So if you're smaller, thinner, there's a different formula for you. And then for those of you that are my curvy girls, you know, and just have always had that Marilyn Monroe and a, a lot more hourglass, you would say, but maybe that's disappeared a little bit now, you know, you're probably still, that's where I would classify you as body type. Okay. So be thinking about that and we'll come back to it. If anybody has identified with one of those and wants to, wants to know, well, how do I adjust for me? So frequency wise, twice a week strength training, and we need to get specific on this. So twice a week strength training, really picking up some weights and reaching fatigue. So muscular fatigue. So we've talked a little about fatigue and exhaustion and lack of energy. Feeling like you're just a puddle when you walk out of a workout is not necessary, but muscular fatigue when you finish a set of exercises and that feels like I really can't do another one or I can't do another good one. I feel like I'm cheating if I'm going to do another one. Then you've done an excellent job of doing what we call overloading the muscle and you must overload it so that between the time that you exercise today and next time that recovery period, this is where fitness happens. Some of us forget that. We think we should exercise every day and every day hard, but what we need to keep in mind is somewhere between 40 and 50, our need for recovery goes up quite a bit for many of us. So if you exercise on Monday and then on Thursday, you're leaving a good 72 hours between, that's now more optimal than what we all learned was Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Take a little bit more recovery time, especially those of you that are saying, I'm not seeing any progress and I'm tired all the time or I'm sore when I go to work out again. That's your body telling you, you just need another day of recovery and you can be active. You can go for a walk, go for a swim. You can hop on your bicycle and move your body, but don't do strength training again until you're really feeling I'm recovered. So twice a week strength training, and here's why not three. So I know some of you would be saying, well, I thought three was better. And it's what we were taught. But in testing of postmenopausal women, looking at once, twice, or three times, once wasn't enough. Three times was actually too much. And so what happened with all of the subjects was more couch compensation. They were like, well, I worked out today. So, you know, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to read the book. They're borrowing Dr. Anna's book, right? So and the twice a week group exercised enough that they had more energy, more stamina, more strength, and still had more energy. So they were the ones who then wanted to garden all afternoon, wanted to go play golf with their friends, wanted to clean the house. Well, can you want to clean the house? I don't know. Um, but you get the point. They were more active all day. And they were the biggest energy expenders. So we can call that calorie burning. That's not necessarily the goal. But if you have a more active life overall, remember that we're exercising so that we can play more in life, not just exercising to exercise, right? So if you can keep that in mind, twice a week is your golden ticket. And two or three times 
a week of doing short, intense interval training. It's 15 or 20 minutes at a time, bookended by a good warm up and a cool down are the sweet spot. And you can do those on same days or other days. And then you fill in with your light to moderate exercise. You can be active, you can take a walk and you should any day. So that's kind of how I would put it together. Yeah, no, I, I love that. And also that clarity because too, you know, exercising to muscular fatigue. exhaustion, muscular fatigue. I think that's really, that's really important because oftentimes we, and you know, we don't push our boundaries, or our limits enough in these ways. We want to do it. To, it's like that, like how you say the Goldilocks phenomena, we want to mm -hmm. hit our sweet spot and push us so that there's growth afterwards. And what do you recommend too, like after workout, as far as, um, nourishment after a workout. Yeah, I'm a smoothie girl. So did you see my video earlier? Is that why you're asking? <laughs> no, I didn't see it. Timing is so important. It doesn't have yeah. to be a smoothie. So it is for me because I, because I love them. I started doing that when I was 30. Honestly, I started before I knew what was good for me. So I was, I was having some chemical bombs. It is the first and the only reason why I carry a product. And um, it's so important that we find a clean one that we love and it can be a meal. So if you're not a smoothie girl, you haven't gotten to that point of bonding yet, a good quality meal. But the sweet spot is about 60 to 120 minutes or one to two hours after you do an intense workout. Your, your body is open so that muscle protein synthesis basically being able to use the protein that you eat for the benefit of your lean muscle tissue is optimized right then. So getting about 30 grams of protein at that 90 minute spot is mm -hmm. perfection. And there's some proof that as we age, that number actually may climb. 70 year old men studied actually needed twice as much as a 20 something man to get the same benefits and results, they were able to achieve them, but the 70 year old man needed 40 grams of protein while the 20 year old had 20 grams and got the same recovery benefits. So, you know, you can take that in right now, but if you're shooting for 30 grams in a meal, whether it's you sit down to a salmon and on salad, or you're actually having a smoothie, perfect timing. Yeah, I love that. I think there's so many, you know, benefits within that time frame to actually spike our insulin yes. at that point to have a muscle regeneration to support mm -hmm. muscle growth and repair during that time as well. So timing after your workouts, eating within that 90 minute win window, right? You like That's that 90 right. minute point after your after your workout. I like that. Well, Deborah, what uh, advice will you give our clients to? There's so much, you have so much information. Tell us, tell our audience where they can get a hold of you. I put the links, you guys, in the in the show notes for Deborah's uh, amazing, fabulous, you guys have to watch it, her TEDx talk, and also your five, five free videos that you've given us. And plus, if you guys are on my email list, you received an email today about the 80 off cafe. So $80 off your gym membership. And so that link is also in the show notes, the description of this talk. Thanks so much. And thanks for sharing that. So uh, mm -hmm. I have to shoot the horn of my members and, you know, they are a perk that, you know, it seems an unfair and advantage to talk about, but I think it's community right now. We're all missing okay. a bit of literal community but I think it's so nice to have this place where the people you're surrounded with are going through the exact same thing that you are going through. And, you know, I can say that for many of our members, very much like the results I've had with Keto Green 16, some of them we've we've done more lives. I can tell you I've done more live exercise with them than I have for the last four years but because they've been more active, more engaged, I've been in there with them. Some of them are in better shape since COVID started than they were before. And that's something to be proud of. I think, you know, that um, it's that community and accountability that all of us need. I don't think we ever graduate from the need for that. So true. 
So true. I I need it every day. And I'm so grateful for our online community, our Keto Green community, our challenge group, all of them. It, it's just been amazing to be with them on this journey because that it does make a difference. It makes a difference in so many ways. So yeah. All right. And, and um and so people can find you yes. there. Oh, yes, I did. I failed my answering my question last time. So it's flipping50.com is where I'm hanging out. That's all words spelled out. And on all of the social media channels, you'll find me at flipping50 TV. Flipping50, flipping50 TV. I love it. And your Instagram is fabulous. So everyone watch you know, be sure to follow her Instagram and, and her Facebook. Deborah has been an amazing mentor to me. And especially if there's an area that's like, we, we talk about the entire, right. The entire body, the entire, um, we're, you know, our, our existence in so many ways, mental, spiritual, physical, and all these aspects come together. So if there, if we know that there's a weakness, like exercise for me, honestly, as much as I love leaving the gym or leaving, finishing my workout now that the gyms are closed or closing or, or limited, but having, having that um, community around it really helps you and helps you keep accountable during this journey. As, as so many people in our, in our community groups find out, like I couldn't do this alone. And I wrote about this in my potato chip easing today. I call it my potato chip easing. <laughs> and, um, and so for those listening, if you have not signed up to my blog at dranna.com, be sure to sign up. You never know what you'll receive, <laughs> but but the one the really important, the really important thing is that we're not alone. And I just finished a five-day water fast, five-day, 19 hour and three minute. I don't know how many I'm just guessing. <laughs> but you know, a, a extended water fast while I was traveling, which I I, you know, was really I just took it one day at a time. And I think that's the way we too, we have to approach every new discipline and practice is today I'm gonna do this, right? Today I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna get through today and then you know, and just deal with today, not think I've got to do this for the next five weeks, four times a week for, yeah. you know, 20 minutes, even 20 minutes a, a day. I mean, let's just look, what do I need to do today? Or what's on my schedule for tomorrow that I can check off? And, and being nearsighted like that for me is very, very helpful in establishing new practices. And what do you recommend? I think what you are talking about is just so very important. And I think planning ahead, you know, is really important. So whether it's on a Sunday, you sit down and look at what am I going to do? What needs to be on my calendar so that we don't have to do both. We don't have to both think about what I'm going to do and then do it because I think we end up having time to do one of those, but not both. So you don't want to do it random and not have a plan. And you, you don't want to have to, okay, I've figured out what I'm going to do and now I don't have time to do it. So I think planning ahead, so very important. And then you've got the plan, but the plan, the structure gives you freedom. You could show up on that day and say, you know, I'm not feeling good. I'm really feeling very low on energy. So this high intensity interval training, I think should become a short walk. And I think listening to your body once you have the plan is super wise. I like that because that just gave me a permission to have a movement time. Mm -hmm. So what, you know, to be able to substitute a movement that feels congruent to my state of being at that moment. That it's feels very supportive. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. I like to use the 10 minute rule. So if you are, you're scheduled to exercise, this is your exercise time, but you're not feeling it start, do those first 10 minutes. And usually at 10 minutes, you will know if you are still not feeling it, you're probably better off taking a rest day taking an easier day and doing some stretching and, and calling it. And a lot of times your mood will have changed and that chemistry will have changed and you will want to continue. Yeah. Yeah. I feel that many, many days and that and being <laughs> able to do. So it, it describe also the experience when people get into your flipping 50 gym membership cafe. <laughs> what a mouthful. I know. Yeah. So we, we start people 
twice a year. So we open on purpose twice a year so that we can take all those newcomers and we can all kind of initiate and orient to what's happening. What should I do first and second? Because I'll tell you, there's a lot of content in there. And the last thing I want to do is make it a library where you walk in and you don't really know what you're looking for and you don't walk out with something because of that. So we very specifically suggest here are the steps ABC that we want you to go through. And depending on what are your first biggest priorities that you want to work on, we break things into little mini courses. So if it happens to be weight loss or it happens to be cellulite or, you know, I want to exercise, but my joints are really giving me a lot of problems, it's joint specific or bone health. We have nine mini courses that they can focus on where it's exactly the content they need first. So they can go through what they need without the overwhelm and the other information will always be there next. I like that. You know, that there's customization in that. Yeah. And then your Facebook community, your membership yeah. community, which is fabulous. Um, thank you. And, and just talk about what, what does a day in your life look like? Share a day in your life. Well, you know, I keep hoping, I mean, when does that, like everybody's watching Netflix. When does that show up? Cause I'm not getting it. Right? Um, no, you know, it's, um, uh, it's been super busy during COVID. Um, but it's like a, you get up in the morning and you're really excited to do what you do because the women that you're helping are so full of gratitude that, you know, they are getting the energy and the vitality that they want to need to go and do the things that are unique that only they can do. I mean, that's what keeps me going. But I'm an early riser. So I get up and enjoy my, you know, black coffee, thanks to you and and mash just so I can uh, do a little more intermittent fasting. I'll do um, some some high intensity interval training or some strength training after I've worked for a few hours. Cause I find that creative time. I don't get later if I miss it in the morning mm. and then I'll end up with uh, my first kind of breaking fast overnight is a smoothie, usually late morning, kind of a brunch. And, you know, then I do, you know, lots of meetings, lots of appointments, some private clients um, still working with them. And we're focusing on, you know, that cafe is our membership is my heart. So we take really good care of them. We're constantly building new programs, preparing a masterclass on the topics that they're all kind of a buzz about. And um, so I'm focused on that for a good part of the afternoon and into the evening. There's a couple more usually webinars or podcasts or something. And um and then I go to bed just as early as I wake up. So, so um, you'll find me in my pajamas at about 7.30. <laughs> early to bed, early to rise. Early to bed, early to rise. I love it. I love it. Um, I want to thank you so much. You know, thank you for your friendship. Love our girlfriend time always. Thanks for being available. That can, you know, that we could call on you and look to you as a reliable resource. And and I feel very blessed to be able to share you with our community group. So everyone listening, you enjoyed this. Definitely give a, a shout out here, a thank you, and check out Deborah's Deborah's site. So flipping fifty tv.com flipping 50 tv.com for the website and the links that I put here in the show notes to catch up, catch up with her and her amazing, her amazing work and her amazing books and her amazing program. So thank you, Deborah. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. The website there was flipping 50.com oh, flipping 50, but then there was <laughs> flipping 50 TV is the Instagram. Yep. All the social media accounts. All the social media. Okay. Flipping50.com. Flipping50.com. So you guys all check that out and um, give a shout out. Please share this episode. And I love your feedback. I love to know what your exercise routine is doing. I know yeah. my daughter, Brittany, loves hula hooping. 
hooping and hula both. <laughs> she loves doing hula and hooping. And, and for me, boxing, yoga, doing yeah. these hit yeah. workouts that are functional that I feel like, okay, you know, gaining my strength back, that's powerful to me as well as, you know, having that balance, as Deborah said, with yoga, that um, flexibility training and balance training, which is so critical as we get yeah. older. So we're never too old and we're never too young to start something new and fun. Just have fun with it. Amen. Right. Yes. Thank you, everyone.